Uh, recently, I started to learn a new foreign language. And I really like the early stages of learning a language because it feels a lot like a kid playing with Lego. Each group of words in Grammar Rule is like a new Lego set. And it's a lot of fun to learn how to put together the pieces to build the model. But we all know that the most fun you have with Lego is whenever you take this apart and you start to mix and match and be creative. So you take the laser guns off the space set and you put them onto the pirate ship because, well, what's better than pirates? Pirates with laser guns, of course. <laughs> Language can be fun like this too because you learn something simple like the past tense. The man walked down the street. But then you learn adjectives and adverbs and you can start to put them in and make sentences like, the crazy, scary man walked slowly down the dark street. But a lot of people, when they learn a language, they want to skip ahead to the next level where you start having conversations with native speakers because this is where the real language learning happens, right? You know, you start off slow, making mistakes, but then gradually, as you practice, you naturally get better at the language until it's flowing out your mouth like music. Well, I used to think like this. I also used to learn like this and teach like this, but not anymore. Here today, I'm in the first semester of a research master's, so very much in the early stages of testing a hypothesis. And so my story for you today is really about the emergence of an idea. And it's a story of three amazing women, Jackie, Jisook, and Mary, who completely changed the way that I think and teach and learn languages. Jackie was one of the first students that I ever taught. I was a fresh-faced graduate teaching English in South Korea at an adult English academy. I was given the level four classes. Levels one, two, and three were taught by Korean teachers, so level four was the first time that these students had ever met, often, a native speaker. Of course, they were quite nervous, and Jackie was the most nervous I've ever seen anyone. She came into class on the first day, this tiny, skinny little woman, grasping her bag with both hands, no eye contact straight to her chair. She was shaking so much, she dropped her bag on the floor, and she went down to get it and halfway realized that we were all looking at her, so she just kind of froze at the edge. We could hear her hyperventilating through the rest of the class. But Jackie was one of the most incredible women I've ever met. The year before, she and her husband sent their only son to study at university in America. And after a couple of months, he called back and he said, Mom, I've got an American girlfriend. Well, Jackie, she went on red alert and she thought, oh my God, he's gonna marry her. There's gonna be a wedding in America. I'm gonna have to speak English. I can't speak English. They're all gonna think I'm uneducated. They're gonna ignore me. Oh my God, what's gonna happen? So she took action. She came to our school and she started from nothing. And in less than a year, she had worked up to this level four class. She was absolutely incredible, dedicated, smart, and motivated. But when she came to my class, she made quite a lot of mistakes. And a lot of students from level three going up to level four, they made a lot of mistakes because level three was still playing with Lego. You had lots of time to think and put the sentence together. But suddenly in level four, you had to tell stories. You had to put multiple sentences together, one after the other. You didn't have time to think. You had to think, were you being interesting? Were you on topic? Were you, should you ask a question? And so the cognitive capacity to focus on the linguistic task got smaller and smaller, and students made a lot of errors. So Jackie made sentences like, last year, my son go America and meet America girl. Five mistakes in that sentence. Now, did I correct her when she did this? Of course not. Language is not about strictly correcting every mistake. It's about naturally gaining confidence and practicing and naturally getting better. Well, at the end of that year, I felt very proud of my achievement because Jackie and the other students, they all seemed really relaxed in my class and they were chatting. Now, they were making still quite a lot of mistakes, but I didn't worry because I knew with this new confidence they would practice more and get better. My second and third year were spent in different cities and uh, different schools. But my fourth year brought me back to that first school. But now I was an experienced teacher. I was a level six teacher, the top master's class. I went into one of those classes and there was Jackie. She'd made it right to the top. It was really great to catch up with her. Her son did not marry the American girl. <laughs> he came back home. He had a Korean girlfriend. <sighs> Everything was okay. 
But as I talked to Jackie, something worried me. It was kind of hard to understand her because the same mistakes that she had been making three years ago were still there, but these new mistakes had also crept in. But she had grown in confidence, so she was speaking at twice the speed, so the mistakes were coming rapid fire even quicker, and I had to really listen carefully to understand what she was saying. And it really, it wasn't fun to speak to her anymore. She said she went and visited her son in America, and I asked, oh, so did you talk to anybody? She said, well, I tried, but they didn't understand my accent. Yet Jackie had a great accent and her pronunciation was fantastic. She just, when you make a lot of even little mistakes very quickly, people don't understand. Well, I felt personally guilty because Jackie came into my class from level three, a fantastic student, all the Lego pieces perfectly in order. But in her nervousness, she had bungled them together and shown them to me. And my response was, very good, you're doing really well, keep going. So I was responsible for this woman and actually, many other students I met again not actually being very good. So you know they say karma's a bitch, right? <laughs> Jisook and her husband moved from the countryside in Korea into Seoul to open a little convenience store that happened to be next to my apartment. I had been teaching English in the day and I'd been studying Korean at night. But I was doing it the right way. I was doing a lot of reading and watching TV, but most of all, I was talking to people, language exchange partners, the cashier in the shop, people on the street, everyone everywhere. And you know what? After three years, I felt like I was getting pretty good. It was at the point where I just wasn't thinking and the language was coming out and everyone was saying how well I was doing and smiling and encouraging. It was brilliant. Well, I went into Jackie's store, or not Jackie, excuse me. I went into Jisook's store on the first day and I asked a simple question. I said, when did you come here? Which in Korean is, Yogi saw onze o shasayo? Well, Jackie, or sorry, Jisook made a sound that was like, eh? And I looked up, and on Jisook's face, she looked very confused. But I thought, well, well, that question is correct. Maybe she didn't understand my pronunciation. Oh, no, I know. She's from a different province, different accent. That's why she didn't understand. But I asked my Korean friend about this, and he said, well, actually, John, you don't say Yogi saw. You say Yogi eh onje o shasayo. Now, I was dumbstruck by this because this was really simple, and I had been using this all the time, everywhere. So I went back to that shop every day, and I spoke to Jisook every day, and every day I heard, eh, and I learned a new error in my language production. And you know what? As it turned out, there were a lot of errors, and I actually wasn't as good as I thought I was. Jisook turned out to be probably the best teacher I've ever had, and she didn't even know it. But after about two months, she stopped making that sound. She told me that she felt proud of herself because when she first came into Seoul, she didn't know how to speak to foreigners, but now she'd learned how to do it. And we all know what she means. All of us have experienced a foreigner speaking to us in our native language, and we really don't understand what they're talking about, but we smile and we nod. But Jisook wasn't as good at hiding her confusion as she thought. Because if I look carefully at her face, when I made a mistake, her eyes just darted down to the left for a second. So every time I went in the shop, I stared very closely at her face. But not only with her, with all the other people I was meeting. And you know what? Each other person, when I made a mistake, there was a distinctive sign, a slight furrow of the brow, or even just a slight a glazed expression for a fraction of a second that showed that there was some extra cognitive action going on because they didn't understand what I said. Now, I was fascinated by this, but I thought, how the hell did I miss this for three years? And well, I know the answer to that. You see, even when I talk to people in English, I have a bad habit of not looking at them in the face. And in fact, whenever I'm talking to someone and I, I look up and see them staring at me, it tends to make me do my father Dougal when he's done something wrong impression, you know, when he's just kind of looking around and not looking at the person. So I had been missing all of this information coming and not picking up on it. Well, I went back to my level six class and did a little experiment. Every time one of my students said something wrong, I just for two seconds, I put my eyes down to the left, a little bit confused, and then looked back. Most of the students, including Jackie, no change. They either didn't notice or they saw it and just didn't change what they were saying. But there were one or two students in each class who did. Every time I did that, they either stopped, they asked a question, or they changed their sentence. 
And these were the students that we would have called the language geniuses. The students who the other students in this top class asked, how, how do you get so good? You've never lived abroad, you're amazing. And you know what their response was? Oh, just, you know, naturally chatting. And they weren't being disingenuous, they were really being honest. In this environment of eight or 10 students with a native uh, teacher, the same signal is coming out, the same visual signal, but only one or two are actually picking up on it and using it. Well, that was the last year that I actually taught those types of adult classes. I became more interested in using the, the facial expressions and experimenting with it. So I opened my own little academy and used kids and then did some other work with other adults using facial expressions to see how they respond. And it has led to the final lady of this story, Mary. And I'd like to introduce you to Mary. This is Mary. Hi, Mary. Mary, I am stand here, talk to audience. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I am standing here, talking to the audience. Okay, all right. So Mary's, it's an animated avatar that uses facial expressions to give feedback to language learners on their utterances. And it's part of a bigger personalized e-learning platform that's designed to sit right between the early stages of playing with Lego and then the final stage of talking and chatting with native speakers. Now it's designed as a kind of semi-social simulation where learners like myself and Jackie can go in, practice talking and practice speaking and get actual feedback so these little mistakes we make don't become huge problems in the future. But it also does something else possibly more important. It teaches language learners to look at the expressions in the listener's face to get that feedback so that when they enter the social sphere and begin talking, they are aware and they are sensitive to the internal mental state of the listener. So if they are causing some difficulty with what they say, they can adapt and improve. And that way, the more they talk, the better they will get. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Recently, I started to learn a new foreign language. And I like the early stages of learning a language. Right now, I'm very happy playing with my Lego, but it makes me even happier to know that in the future, the first person that I'm gonna to talk to is gonna be Mary. And Mary's gonna help me, and hopefully help everybody, become language geniuses. Thank you. <laughs>